and music. What up, T Smalls in the house? What's going on, Mr. Palmer? How you doing, sir? It's a beautiful day to be under the tree with Miss Climax herself. <laughs> Climax means you know different names depends on where you're at in your life. But today it's going to be all about the music and what she is doing. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Cheryl Cooley is in the house. T Smalls, show her some love. We talking under the tree. I think you need to do what you do for her too. You was practicing this thing, so go ahead and show off a little bit. Show her some more love. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day in this neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Please, won't you be my neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't say no to that. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's Talk Under the Tree. I'm Mr. Palmer, T. Smalls in the house, Miss Cheryl Cooley from Climax, all the way from the West Coast. You're in Los Angeles. I thank you, all right? Yeah. Yeah, LA is the city. Actually, I used to live in San Diego. I went up to LA, totally different city. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey Smalls, this is a true story. I went to LA, bro. And yeah. I was looking behind me and say, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was keeping it real on that. Yeah. Just keeping it real, huh? Like, yeah, damn. A, yeah, it was it's a totally different experience on that right there. Uh, a lot of a lot of snacks up there, huh? A lot of snacks. And you know what? <laughs> I must admit, I must admit, I was gonna say this, you know, when we got on here. I never been starstruck. We did several artists, you know, interview, but I'm starstruck. Let me tell you why. Wow. When I seen the video clip with her on Soul Train with Don Cornelius. Back in the days, I said, whoa. <laughs> hey, that's an iconic legend right there, man. Woo, oh, man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you got to make a girl blush now. Yeah. And I say, this thing is real. You know, Don Kenny's had the voice, you know. What he say? Love, peace, and soul. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it was all good. But we're glad you can be here with us, Miss Cooley. And you're a very humble person. I kind of advertise that a little bit. You, you know, very humble and down to earth. And Thank and you. I've seen some of your clips that you know you do this thing for real. As an African American guitarist, y'all have a, like an aura, I would say, that yeah. you know about yourself that y'all do. I'm gonna show you a picture real quick. I can't, you know, hold it any longer. Yeah, we do this on here. And when I seen this picture right here, I said, "Yeah, she bad." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There she go. There she go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> and before we go a little further, Mr. Smalls, my co-host, he plays the um acoustic guitar. He's getting into it. Oh, and, okay. and he wanted me to show, you know, his instructor a little, you know, love. And her her name is Miss Gertrude. So she wanted to, you know, make sure that, you know, I didn't get off of here without showing her picture to give her some harm. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Give a little homage to Miss Gertrude right there. <laughs> That's right. Guitar is finest. Guitar is finest. Yeah. You know, I, re I read some of your bio. You know, you re I know you received some Christmas gifts, you know, back in the days under the tree of guitar. Yeah, we know about you. We do our studying now. <laughs> That's <the podcast>. oh, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, when did you really know that you kind of had the gift? Because, you know, I have, you know, I had a guitar as a kid. I'm sure my co-host had one, Mr. Smalls. We just kind of played around with it. So when did you really pick it up to say, okay, I got this? Um, You know, I never really defined it like that because it was such a a step-by-step -step process. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, when I saw uh, bands on TV playing guitar, I was like, oh, I have one of those. Let me go get my toy guitar and try to act like them. So, you know, it was just always was a part of me, you know. Um, and as I got older, my parents got me, you know, a, a more real guitar each time. So I don't know. I, I almost want to say I was born into it. <laughs> you know, I don't think there was any one defining moment. I think it just uh, was a, li a life process, you know, just kind of coming together with it. Um, and then, you know, I'm sure you've heard my story where my... Um, my sister was married to a jazz musician by the name of Hubert Laws. 
and he was on tour and had a had a guitar, had a real guitar. And uh, so I was all excited and I got my toy guitar to try to play along with him. And then my sister all of a sudden jumped up and said, hey, why don't we show some guitar lessons? And so that's really how I started on my journey um, with the guitar. But uh, you know, I I went to a school that really, uh, you know, went to a grammar school that was really uh, into teaching about uh, musical instruments and how the uh, orchestra was all put together and all like that. So some part of my life, there was always some kind of music, um, uh, musical instrument instructions or something like that. Uh, so that's really how I got started. My, my, uh, my parents got me some private guitar lessons and I studied since I was 11 years old. And uh, studied all through, uh, you know, grammar school, junior high at that time and uh, high school. And I even went on to college to get a music degree in music. Wow, that's a blessing. Nice. 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 I've noticed, you know, a lot of people in your industry actually go to music school, go to music school and get a degree. I've noticed that, especially in the jazz circuit, it seemed like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the things that, uh, you know, Hubert and all the jazz musicians that he played with. (laughs) One of their mantras to me was, you know, if you don't know how to read music, you're not going to eat. Uh, and at that time, you know, it was a true statement for them. They, you know, they had to be able to just sit in front of a music start a chart and just read like that. You know what? Of course, as time went on and, um, you know, computers and electronic instruments were invented, then, you know, learning, learning how to read wasn't a priority as much as it was when you have a, you know, a generic real instrument. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I mean, I'm glad I learned always. I learned, you know, how to read, uh, I learned how to play by ear, you know, how to write music. And I'm really glad I learned all of those because, I mean, there's been some times when, you know, I've been hired by other artists to just, you know, sit there and read the chart. A few times I've uh, played uh, backup for uh, Thelma Houston and, you know, they mm. everything is chart reading. So they all they do is they start counting it off and you better know what you're doing. Right. Wow. right. I heard, um, James Brown used to be like that, yeah. very talented. And he, you know, had the music thing by ear because a lot of times he used to tell his band, give me the short horn, give me the long horn. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's what that meant. Okay, now I'm just now learning. Okay. Right. I'm sure you heard him say that in some of his music. Yeah, yeah. Right. I had no idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Give me the long horn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> short horn. Wow. Yeah. But if, but if your beat was off, whether you was a guitarist or a drum, he did this right here. I don't know if you can see my finger. Let me get it in the camera. You know what that meant, right? When he find you. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Five out of yeah, That too, yep. <laughs> you did <get> both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. And actually, he did it like, when he held those fingers up, he did it like three times real quick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they already know. Right. So in 1979, that's when the climax thing started, I would say. Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I had, uh, you know, I, I was playing with a lot of uh, professional musicians at the time. Like I said, I, I, you know, got my college degree and started playing with a lot of different uh, community bands, city bands and stuff like that. And, you know, playing in clubs, club bands. And I happened to be pre- uh, rehearsing with another band. And I uh, saw these girls looking in the window of the rehearsal room door and uh, they just busted in and said, hey, you don't want to play with this band. You want to play with our band. We have an all-female band called Climax. <laughs> and so, you know, wow. it, I kind of looked at them like, I don't think these girls can play. You know, because I had been used to playing with professional musicians. And they mm-hmm. were just kind of, you know, bubbly and like, hey, you know, all-female band. I thought, oh, I don't think I'm going to do this, you know. So they, you know, they said when their rehearsal was going to be, was like the next day. And I didn't go. <laughs> And then I got the guilt. You know, I had a little little voice in your head, you know, hey, you know, you should have went. You know, you should have <laughs> got the guilt, you know, and I called him. I said, hey, you know, sorry I missed your rehearsal. When's the next one? And he said, oh, tomorrow. And I was like, <laughs> 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 So uh, I, I reluctantly went to the rehearsal. And when I got in, I saw they were having fun. You know, if the musicianship may not have been that good. But they were having fun, and that's really what kept me going. I mean, at first I was trying to find excuses to stop going, but they were really having fun. So that's really what kind of kept me, uh, you know, showing up to rehearsal. And then because I had the, you know, the knowledge of how to arrange music and write music, uh, I would 
you know, take songs off the radio and bring it to rehearsal and just kind of show everybody their parts and stuff like that. You know, because I, I mean, I, I, I kind of stumbled into the fact that, you know, finding out that they couldn't read music. So, you know, as opposed to embarrassing them and say, well, I wrote the chart. You know, I said, well, you know, maybe I wrote it wrong. Let me show you what I wrote. Right. So, you know, I just, you know, played the part for him and we, you know, mm -hmm. started playing uh, some uh, top 40 songs off the radio. And uh, a little short story, we uh, had a uh, opportunity to play talent night in one of the clubs uh, in uh, L.A. And uh, we went there uh, and asked the house band if we could use their instruments so we wouldn't have to try to drag our instruments and everything. And they kind of looked at us and said, well, what are you going to do? And we said, we're all, all female band. Well, at that time, you know, 1979, 1980, you know, it was not heard of. So they were like, no, nah, you're not going to touch my instrument. So, you know, the drummer went and she talked to the club owner and he, you know, he said, ah, oh, let them play. It'll be a good laugh. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so we got up there and we, you know, we, we played there. So I, of course, I brought my guitar, but, you know, like the drums and stuff like that. So we got up there and we blew them away. They had no idea that we were going to sound as good as we did. And, of course, we got our props from that. Uh, so, you know. We didn't do a lot of club gigs, but, you know, a couple of times we were able to really show our talent because it was such a new idea. People weren't ready for it. Yeah, I've seen some of your clips that you just did in rehearsal mm -hmm. besides the stage in the sh during the show. And yeah. I said, yep, you got it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's been all of my life. You know, I mean, that's yeah. I, I Like I said, my, my sister and I, we have such a huge age gap. So mm -hmm. we were like the only child in the same family. So the guitar was like my playmate. That was it. That, that's what I had to do. I mean, as a kid, I remember, you know, practicing four or five times, you know, a, a week, you know, sometimes four or five, six hours a day because I didn't have anything else to do. Uh, so guitar has always been, you know, my, my playmate. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's an old saying that two women don't get along in the you know in the same house. So, an all girl band back in the days, you know where I'm going. That hey, yeah, it was six of y'all too. <laughs> y'all did y'all get along on the road? Yeah, actually, there was eight of us at one point. But wow, you know, one of the things that really kind of kept us going is that we were having fun. You know, it was something new, uh, something that we wanted to do, and of course, you know, we got the attention and all of that. So, you know, in the beginning, it really was. It was new. It was a playground. It was something fun to do. And, you know, we really got along pretty good uh, on the road and in, in the very beginning. You know, of course, things change as people start getting more and more popular and the egos start flying all over the place. But I have to say, really, um, you know, we, we had a good time when, it, when we first got out there. Uh, you know, what a lot of people don't know is that there were two albums that we had that weren't very popular because, you know, the, the, it's funny because the DJs would say, you know, uh, here's a band called Climax. Yeah, that was like the first song that we did called Never Underestimate the Power of Woman. And the mm -hmm. second album came out, we had a song called Wild Girls. And then the, the DJs would say, oh, here's uh, the band Climax. Yeah. And so people were like, mm, you know, okay, yeah, that's cute. And then by the time we did the third album, video came out. And so they were actually able to see what an all-girl band really could do and look like. So, right. um, and all of a sudden, the DJs got on the radio, you know, with the song "The Men All Pause," and it's like, and here's climax. <laughs> you know? Oh wow! Yeah, it kind of got a little um, bit more well, hyped up, huh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but really, video just kind of broke open the door for us because then all of a sudden, people could see, oh, climax is an all-female band, and they can play, and they look pretty good. So, I think I'll go buy their record. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Y'all, wow. y'all did have a big record, man. I, 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 I was a little kid back then, but I still remember it. <laughs> hey, actually, 1979, I was a kid too. Look, <laughs> <laughs> man, how much of an impact it made for yes, you. Yes, for you. Man, you know? Check this out, man. Everybody with everybody in 1984, everybody was having a meeting in the ladies' room. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually that that song has a true story um right. uh I, you know uh, our our label mate was a midnight star 
And uh, one night, one of the guys from Midnight Star and his girlfriend was at a club party and everything. And one of the girls from Climax, you know, recognized her and ran over and hugged and kissed him and everything. And the girlfriend was like, well, who is she? And she got upset and got up from the table and went to the ladies room. And so the guy said, hey, that'd be a good idea for a song. Meeting in the ladies room. (laughs) That's hilarious. Man, I was was, was hearing that song today again. Right. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, people still like it. I mean, when we play concerts now, you know, if, if they don't walk, get up out of their seats for no other song, for for sure, meeting in the ladies' room. Yeah, you, you were saying the little, you know, story about you know the guy or whoever was going to laugh at you um, when you was first introduced to him, or y'all was first introduced to him to play. Did he give you this look like this right here? Right here I'm going to play a little sound bite. Did he? Did he say this right here? Who is you? <laughs> Did that happen? Yeah, you know, it was more like, how y'all get up in here? <laughs> uh, you want to do what? <laughs> it was like, hey, I came to sing. I came to sing. <laughs> you know girls ain't supposed to play music instruments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I have a story about the kitchen. <laughs> so, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I don't know, one day my, my mom said I was in her way and in the kitchen, and she said, Look, either you're going to stay in the kitchen and learn how to cook, or you're going to go in this other room and practice your guitar. Well, you know what I picked, right? So, I just want you to know today, as of today, I still don't know how to cook. No. Wow. no. You know, hey, you know what? I don't believe that, man. I, I, I think you that. just, I think you just said putting it on, man. I, you, okay. you look like you can throw down, oh, like you, no. you, 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 you. Hey, how how they say it? You look like you put your foot in some. Uh, no. <laughs> I'll get, I'll get some frozen dinners and throw them at you. They go now. You do it. <laughs> wow, I believe her. I, I believe her. Have you ever um worked with Prince? No, and we never got a chance to work with Prince. But, you know, uh, we uh, worked with uh, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, who was, you know, kind of from the time uh, Prince, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, camp. So um, that was about as close as we got. (laughs) got. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Who would you say, I'm going to give you, you know, one person to pick. I know it's going to be hard, maybe two. I'm going to say male guitarist. That you can say that that's the it factor. Uh, they, they Ray, Parker. Ray Parker. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, I, I got a chance to kind of hang around Ray for a little bit. And uh, he, he told me something about my playing that changed my playing forever. You know I mean? He said, you know, it's not what you're playing it's how you're playing it. Okay. And so cool. once he kind of just, you know, explained it and demonstrated, it, then it was like my, my playing style just went, went through the roof after that. And that was really kind of uh, really before I got in Climax that he really kind of, you know, I don't want to say mentor, but every once in a while, you know, we would get together and, you know, just play guitar. And he'd show me some things, you know, show me how he played different songs. Uh, you know, the Rufus song. What is it? Love. Uh, uh, you got the love. You know, I think he wrote that. I and mean, when he showed me how that guitar part went, it was like, oh, OK, now I get it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he's very he's very talented. Oh yeah, uh huh, yeah, yeah. So that's good. Uh, that's he's the, I call that the it factor. You know, Smalls, we talk about that. Yeah, oh, yeah. you always got to have the it factor, man. It's got to be. It, it's always one somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, we just started saying that Tony Terry taught us about that word, the it factor. The it factor. Right. 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 That, yeah. that hey, that, he huh? he he taught us some other words too, some other phrases too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. You no, know, I mean it, it, it was a it was a a real yeah, good thing, you know. What I mean, it wasn't nothing bad, man. He yeah, yeah. taught us a lot, man, on that interview, you know. Wow, <laughs> nice, nice. The old school artists like yourself. Why do you think that you know some of y'all are unsung because you know you don't really hear about y'all anymore? But I like to give homage to y'all. That's why I like interviewing y'all. Sure, sure. Well, you know, music is very trendy, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, and right now. You know the the music industry has changed. The, the 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 talent factor has changed. The way music is being uh, distributed has changed. Uh, and a lot of people want to hear those real instruments. That, you mm-hmm. know the real uh, uh, 
what we call like a, a song uh, form, song mm -hmm. form <clears throat> for those musicians, you know, out there, AABA -A kind of form, you know, and, and we're really missing that now. You know, a lot of times when you hear some of the songs, it's like the same beat all the way through from beginning to end where, you know, the, with the old school music, there were changes and, and richness of sound and chords and harmonies mm -hmm. and stuff. So I think the human ear really is missing that. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you know, because old school music is not like the commercial making mega bank, we kind of get pushed to the side, but people still want that feeling that right. old school music gives them. But, you know, for the for the corporate, you know, people who want to make profits, you know, they're going to go for whatever the popular sound is. If it's playing one note for 20 minutes That'll and they make millions of dollars off of it, they're going to yeah. go for that, you know, yeah. and you're going to buy it. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> Me and Smalls, we talk about music. You know, I'm a little older than him, not too much. And we always, you know, arguing about the different styles of music. Today's music, I think, you know, if I was writing a song or singing, I could say anything and they buy it. They don't have to match. They don't have to. We're going to do it right now. Smalls, just, I'm going to play a beat. We're going to, we're going to, this 20 seconds, hit it. Anything. And I'm going to say my song, and that's music today. You can say anything. Go ahead, Smalls. Hit it. I'm going to try to do a little song. Yeah. I'm talking under the tree. Believe me. I'm with Mr. P and Cheryl Cooley. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I'm going to hand it off to Mr. P. Tell me what it is, man. <laughs> what it is, what it is. We're under the tree with Miss Cooley. Say climax. Say climax, y'all. Guess what? I don't play no basketball. <laughs> Let it do what it do. It's what we get paid for. This new generation can say anything they want and get paid for. <laughs> <laughs> But that's music today. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, th there's two major factors and why music isn't the same as it used to be. You know, one of them is that they've taken music out of the schools. You know, and a lot of kids that couldn't afford private lessons, they don't have that opportunity to learn how to play instruments anymore. And of course, with the, you know, electronic factor, you know, you could just buy a box and push a button. So, you know, our, our music has become watered down because there's not the teaching of it. And then there's the, the easiness of just making any kind of sound. But the other factor is, is that politically, you know, our good friend, Mr. Bill Clinton, when he de deregulated the music industry in, I think, is 96, uh, the gatekeepers, the, the record companies, the, the A&R people, they no longer had a, a, a job, I guess you could say, or had the power or had the, the opportunity to really be the gatekeepers as far as the type of music that would be submitted to the radio. So with those factors, you know, it's it's reason why we are here today. And of course, you know, the electronic distribution, uh, you know, I mean, what is there? Three major uh, record companies now when before we were, I don't know, hundreds. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. But, uh, you know, the times are just different now with electronics and uh, the deregulation of the entertainment business, not just music industry, but the entertainment. You know, when you think about movies and stuff like that. And, you know, maybe he thought he was doing something great and maybe he didn't really care. But, you know, because there are just no uh, checks and balances anymore, this is what we have. This is what we have to live with is the watered down factor of what, you know, used to be. Right. And I heard you warming up. You did a little uh, Facebook Live warming up, and your style was like electrifying. You had I heard a little church in there too. What? And, and, I, and I heard a little. Shut up! I got it. Yeah, but this me. <laughs> <laughs> I heard all that. I heard a little cockiness in a good way. Well, I raised my hand. I am a funketeer. There you go. I heard it. Right. I heard it. Um. You know, I mean, I, I, the, you know, funk music of the, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, that's my heart. Uh, I mean, I have to say, and I could be wrong, I have to say the grandfather of funk is Sly and the Family Stone. I mean, when you really 
to me, that was the turning point when I heard this song called Dance to the Music. And I was like, right. that's like the it. band. That's the band. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear, you know. Right. Uh, then, of course, you know, Earth, Wind and & Fire and, you know, all kinds of great uh, other bands that, you know, with, with Earth, Wind & Fire, they've added horns and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm a funketeer. I, and, you know, I mean, when I when I start playing rhythms and stuff, it's just it just naturally comes from what what makes me feel good in playing those type of rhythms. Yeah, you had it. Then I seen you um, pat your feet a little bit with the. I think, I'm not a musician, but you with the little um, sound mix, whatever on the floor. What do you call it? Oh, oh, you talking about the effects box? Yeah, effects box. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> for the guitar. I mean, not all the instruments use that, but yeah, it you know gives a little different variation of uh, you know some sounds that come out of the guitar. So yeah, yeah. When I when I heard that, I told I called Smalls and tell, told him, you know, don't call me. <laughs> yeah. I don't want. We. I don't even want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you get the busy signal, huh? I get. Yeah, hey, yeah. hey, hey, as soon as you dial, it be like, hey, man, I'm busy right now, man. I'm busy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and of course, every every Thursday, I, I try to do my rehearsal right there on Facebook Live on my page. So you know, anybody's welcome to come and check out what I'm doing. You know, sometimes I. Sometimes I flub all flub, meaning mess up. Sometimes I mess up all of the places. Sometimes I play it perfect. But hey, I'm I got to keep the chops up. Got to keep the chops yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, you well, do. Yeah, yeah. What kind of guitar do you play? Uh, it, at, that guitar is actually a Fender Telecaster. But I also have a, a Gibson Les Paul that I don't take out too often because it's kind of valuable. And you know, a couple of guys were looking at it way too long. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. actually, that guitar, the that. Les Paul, is the, the guitar I played in all of the different uh, Climax videos, except for uh, Good Love. But all okay. the ones that I did before, uh, that that's the one I would play. Yeah. How many original members are left with y'all? Well, actually, I'm the only original me uh, member that's performing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a long, ugly story. It's not like I didn't ask them, but, Man. you know, we, we ain't okay. trying to go there. <laughs> That's okay. You know the story uh, when one door closed, small finish it off. Another door open. Yeah. You know what? That's a song. Maybe she can act like she's playing the guitar. When another door closes, another one open. <laughs> Lord, Lord, when another door closes, another one opens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Close the door. The doors of the church now open. Uh oh, here it go. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I talk about that uh, online <laughs> concert that y'all um yeah you just did yeah uh, right now we we've uh, teamed up right now meaning October we've teamed up with uh, the American Cancer Society and Five Stars Music and uh, Simul TV. Uh, I have to mention all of them because it, you know it was all of a group mm -hmm. effort. But uh, at first uh, we had just uh, we were going to do the one show uh, in uh, mid October uh, for pay per view for raise money for breast cancer research, mm -hmm. and uh, it was such a great response that they decided to continually uh, loop the concert. Uh, on serial TV. I mean, the, the link is on my Facebook page and on the website, Climax.com. You can always find it on Climax.com. Mm -hmm. But they're going to uh, actually play the concert all this month for October for Breast Cancer uh, uh, Awareness Month. But yeah, you, you go to the, the website there. There's a link there. Uh, pay $9.99 to watch the concert. You can watch it as many times as you want, as many days as you want. And uh, it's, you know, it's a concert that we, we did uh, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, but you know, it's it's really you know got the climax songs and all the choreography and all the right. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I but I that definitely right. you know invite your viewers to you know check out the concert, go to the the website, um, and and click on it. You know, su support breast cancer research. You know, I mean, you get a concert. Uh, for less than ten dollars, you can watch it over and over again. You know, watch it the next day because once you pay, you know, for the month, you can watch it every day of the month. You know, the concert, come home and watch it again. <laughs> so, I know that's yeah, right. Really excited about being part of that. You know, um, and and other things will be coming up from that uh, for next year's uh, concert tour. You had a lot of uh, Billboard hits. Have you ever dreamed being born in Chicago? I guess you can say you was raised in California slightly that you would ever have some billboard hits, a little low you. 
Okay, so let me tell you about this dream I had. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> it. We ready. We okay. ready. So, you know, as a kid, even before I played guitar, I had this dream of being on stage. Because remember, I saw these bands on stage. I mean, on, mm -hmm. on TV. I dreamed of myself being on stage, playing guitar. The lights were going. The audience was screaming. The music was going. I was getting ready to step up to the microphone and sing my first note. But then all of a sudden, I turned to my right. This is my right. <laughs> and I looked at the <laughs> band and I said, gee, it looked kind of odd, but everything sounds good. So let me just go ahead and keep playing and walk up to the mic and sing my first note. Okay, so now, deja vu, right? So fast forward, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years, whatever it was. We are performing at the Olympic Auditorium in downtown Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. The lights are going, the music's going, the audience is all hyped up and everything. And then we're, we're playing the music and I'm getting ready to step up to the microphone and sing a note. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is the dream. What was it about the band when I looked to my, my right that looked odd that I couldn't conceive of when I had the dream? And I mm -hmm. looked over there and I was like, oh, it's an all-female band. So I walked in my dream. Good. That's a blessing. Man. Yeah. Wow. They say dreams come true. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. I like that. I, I, my my life has done that a many a times. I'm definitely a firm believer in, you know, dreams coming true, uh, you know, positive thinking, all of that. It really has done uh manifestations in my life. <laughs> I like a lot of your quotes that you put on Facebook, you know, oh, some yeah. of the things you put on there that's you know positive and you know, you can yeah. read some of those quotes. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a, a big proponent for metaphysics, which is you know like powers of the mind. You know what you think about, you bring about. I'm really into that. I mean, I've been into that for over 20 years now, and I mean, I, I it has worked for my life. And I I really encourage people to you know be more positive about their life. I mean, yeah, things happen, but you know it's not what happens to you; it's how you look at it, how you approach it, how you feel about it. You know, there are some things that are pretty bad. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to discount that, but you know, when when we really step up to the to plate and you know, I guess you could say handle it or at least not let it handle you, mm -hmm. then you can pretty much get through it. They sure can. It's another business adventure that you do have. What is it called? Diffusers? Yeah. The yeah. Talk, talk Diffuser. about it. There you go. Oh, man. Yeah. It's awesome. You know, it, you can put it in your car and, you know, it has a fragrance in it uh, to really, you know, keep your, your breathing air, your breathing, you know, atmosphere in your car, in your house uh, mm -hmm. to really, you know, keep, keep a healthy, uh, you know, air for yourself. You know, and I mean, there's some people that, you know, really need something like this that have some breathing problems and it's, it's so compact and easy to use. I mean, we, we have it on our website also, you click on it. And uh, if you get the pink one, I don't know if you can tell this is pink. If you get the pink one for breast cancer, uh, we'll be, they'll be donating $5 to the breast cancer research. If you get, get the pink one, but yeah, it, it, it's, I like it. You know, you can get all kinds of different, uh, uh, you know, smells and fragrances that you can put in. Uh, you just, you know, put water in it and you can plug it in your car. It's great. It's great. It really works well. A E diffuser. <laughs> it makes make sure y'all get the pink one now. The pink yeah, one. The pink one. <laughs> you know, because climax colors are pink and black. Right. Pink and black for strength. <laughs> we have a question, Mr. Smalls. Go ahead and read that. Uh, what do you think of rap music? Uh, you know. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Here we go. You have to remember. I can't really say anything bad about it, but you mm -hmm. have to remember, I grew up on the theory of music, the the makings, the weavings of music. And for me, rap music misses that. I'm not saying that talented people can't rap, uh, you know, write rap music. I, I give them all kinds of props. I could never do it. But, you know, for me, I mean, I'm looking for the chord changes. I'm looking for the, the song structure. I'm looking for the harmony. I'm looking for the melody. And rap music just doesn't give that for me. So I'm not going to say anything bad about it. It's just not for me. All right. We have one more question. We'll take. Go ahead, Smalls. Is there any talent you like out there today? Uh, I like Bruno Mars, of course, uh, you know, because he's got that's that whole, you know. That's a good one. That's, that's a real good one. <laughs> I like him myself. I, I'm a big fan of Bruno Mars, man. He's he's a talented, not yeah. only an artist, but he's a talented producer, man. He yeah. he he plays 
he plays it like he like he like he hears it, man. I, yeah. I love Bruno Mars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But and all you know, the things you, go ahead, go ahead. Charlie's yeah. okay too. You know, I have to give him his props. He's still around. You know, I, he's definitely uh, you know an inspiration for me. So I have to give him his props. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 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 With all the things you've been through in the music industry, the way music is now, what keeps you going? I mean, because I'm sure it's some ups and downs in this industry from your era till now. I'm sure you, you might have went through a phase you just wanted to give up and do something yeah. else. But what keeps you going? The fans. Good. Really. You know, they keep showing up. I'm going to keep showing up. You know, mm -hmm. they sometimes write me messages on Facebook or send me emails. Uh, they encourage me to keep mm -hmm. going. You know, as long as there's um, as long as there is the I don't want to say interest, but as long as there is the love for uh, climax music, old school music. Uh, I'm going to keep getting out there and doing it because I really appreciate them, you know, spending their hard earned money to go to a concert. For me, that's an honor that they show up. And so if they show up, I'm going to show up. There you go. I know that's right. Are you going to have any, um, like projects like solo that you're going to do just for you? You know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a band person. I, okay. I, I really like being in a band. Uh, you know, the, the, the girls and I, you know, we're going to, definitely get into some uh, new music and stuff. As a matter of fact, one of the theme songs or the theme song for the, uh, the concert series with the American Cancer Society is called For a Woman. And it's a woman's empowerment song. You know, it kind of talks about, you know, the things that women, you know, go through and all the different uh, 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 occupations, you know, to be able to stand up and, and support, you know, the society as well as the family. Uh, so we do have a couple of new songs that are there on the website and on iTunes and all the digital distributions. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, new music is definitely going to be part of our, you know, our journey. <laughs> Good. We really appreciate you today. I mean, you just don't know we're going to give you a round of applause real quick. Oh, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah. You got to you got to pay homage. Thank you. To the old school artist, Miss Cheryl Cooley of Climax and you know what I said in case of anybody missed it when we first got on it's the first time I was ever starstruck <laughs> <laughs> when I seen that soul train thing that was it that's it that's it man hey hey, hey she with us she right here with us man yeah. you know what I mean so yeah. it's a pleasure man it's a pleasure and an honor Thank and we you. do appreciate your your presence uh, Oh, I appreciate your platform and having this available for the, you know, the fans to see and, and understand the artists. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to ask one last question. Uh, how was Don Canelius back then? You know, when you was around him, he was, uh, he's a cool cat. Yeah. You know, I was really surprised because the very first time, uh, you know, I, I was on soul train and, you know, he kind of asked me why I was smiling. I was like, wow, he's paying attention to me. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Wow, that's good. Yeah, being on Soul Train was definitely a dream come true. You know, as a kid watching it and everything, you think, wow, I would like to do that. And all of a sudden, here I am standing next to Don Cornelius, you know, <laughs> again, a dream come true. Right. I'm going to squeeze one last question in from one of your fans. Go ahead, Mr. Smalls. Do you, did you ever do any of those come together day concerts? Come together day? Am I well, with Funk Fest or something? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've done a lot of the uh, old school concerts. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, I, I just did one in September with Confunction, Lakeside, Yarboroughs and People. So, I mean, a lot of times we are on some of those uh, old school tours, you know, but between you and I, you know, when you talk about you in an all girl band and you play hard, you know, some of those guys are a little intimidated. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Hit, hit, hit. <laughs> hey. I think I'll be intimidated too after I seen you warming up. <laughs> I said, "Nah, I bump that." <laughs> hey, small, she was, she was ringing that smoke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, she was clucking it. It was like you know, she was saying, "Play with it, play with it, play with it." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I heard some comments from guys about the way I play guitar. I, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, but you play hard. Tell hard them, of course, tell if them, you gonna play it, play it like you mean it. Tell, tell them when you when you play something, you ain't just gonna give them a snack. You gonna give them the whole buffet. That's right. Like you're 
<laughs> oh, man. That's funny. But you got the talent. God has blessed you with the talent, I must admit. It. Hey, hey, what you see is what you get. Thank you. Yes. Right, yes you know. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to show you a picture one more time just in case someone missed it. This is real. That's hard in the paint right there. I think she might have broke about what two or three strings doing that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she yeah. was going hard. I can see, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like LeBron James in the paint, man, going hard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But well, we appreciate we appreciate you, uh, Mr. Palmer, Mr. Smalls, Miss Cheryl Cooley from Climax. You were listening to Let's Talk Under the Tree. Mr. Smalls, say a little prayer for the sister so she can continue to be safe and successful. God, I thank you for uh, uh, our podcast today. Thank you for Miss Cheryl Cooley joining us, taking time out of her busy schedule. Please continue to bless her. You know what I'm saying? Continue to bless the group Climax. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. We had a good time. Don't forget to wear your mask, social distancing. And now, and all the ladies, Miss uh, Cooley was mentioning something about breast cancer. Make sure you get checked because that's a very serious yes. topic, a uh, very serious health condition. You know, and don't forget to wear your mask, six feet distancing. And always remember to go vote. When is the election? November 3rd? Yeah. Wherever you vote for, just go vote for somebody. You know what I'm saying? Do what you got to do. And we will make, we wish you much success, Miss Cooley, Thank in you. everything that you do. Thank you. And you're a very down-to-earth down to earth person. You, I, actually, you know, I'll tell you off camera that uh, one interview we was doing, we just, we just couldn't do it. That wasn't down-to-earth, so. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> you everybody. Thanks for checking in to Let's Talk Under the Tree. Y'all have a good night and be blessed. We love y'all and be safe. And don't forget the small the mid, don't forget smalls what they, what they gotta do. Wear their what? Wear your mask. Wear your mask. <laughs> <laughs> y'all be easy and peace and we out.